Hello and welcome to our video on plastic shrinkage and cracks in concrete. In this informative session, we'll delve into the factors contributing to plastic shrinkage cracking in fresh concrete and explore measures to control and prevent these cracks. Let's get started. Plastic shrinkage cracking occurs when fresh concrete experiences rapid moisture loss. Factors like air and concrete temperature, humidity, and wind velocity play crucial roles in this phenomenon. These conditions lead to high evaporation rates, causing differential volume changes in the plastic concrete and resulting in cracks ranging from 0.1 to 0.3 millimeters in width. Concrete, susceptible to tensile stresses, can develop non-structural plastic cracks due to a combination of restraint and contraction characteristics. Workmanship during placement and finishing plays a key role, requiring different treatments for concrete with varying workability levels. Early age shrinkage, occurring within the first few hours, can lead to strains comparable to drying shrinkage. Hydration reactions are slow initially, accelerating over 8 to 12 hours, causing a transition from a semi-fluid to a rigid state. Internal and external restraints, including formwork and subgrade friction, contribute to early age shrinkage cracks, manifesting either immediately or later as weaknesses in the concrete. Plastic shrinkage cracks result from a rapid surface water loss before concrete sets. Evaporation rates exceeding the rise of bleed water lead to menisci formation, inducing tensile forces in surface layers. Conditions promoting high evaporation rates include wind velocity over 5 miles per hour, low humidity, and high temperatures. If evaporation exceeds 1 kg per square meter per hour, precautions are needed. This formula helps estimate evaporation rates. Where E is evaporation rate, R is relative, T A is air temperature, T C is concrete or water surface temperature, and V is wind velocity. Concrete temperature during placement is subject to various codal provisions. BIS 7861 sets a threshold of 40 degrees Celsius for hot weather concreting, while AS 1379 limits the maximum concrete temperature at delivery to 35 degrees Celsius. ACI 301-16 and ACI 305.1-14 establish a 35 degrees Celsius maximum for general hot weather construction, with qualification beyond this requiring field experience or pre-construction testing. The concrete manual recommends 26 degrees Celsius for hot arid climates and 32 degrees Celsius for most concretes. MORTH specifies time limits based on concrete temperature, emphasizing 120 minutes for temperatures below 25 degrees Celsius and 90 minutes for 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. When air temperatures exceed 30 degrees Celsius, precautions are advised to ensure acceptable concrete temperature and prevent issues like plastic shrinkage cracking and premature stiffening. Compliance with these guidelines is crucial for optimal concrete performance. Factors like restraint against movement, compaction, bleeding, surface drying, and very early protection significantly impact early age shrinkage and cracking. Restraint increases tensile stress, while well-compacted concrete limits contraction. Inadequate bleeding and surface drying elevate early age shrinkage, and very early protection methods, such as evaporative retarders, help delay cracking. Concrete not properly cured is more prone to early age shrinkage and cracking. Initiating a suitable curing regime within a few hours of placing is crucial to maintaining moisture in the concrete surface for an extended period. But how to minimize plastic shrinkage cracks in concrete? 1. Use of wind cutters One effective method is the use of wind cutters. Wind movement significantly influences plastic shrinkage cracks. By determining wind speed and constructing windbreakers using shade net cloths, tarpaulins, or saris, we can reduce wind speed, especially when it exceeds the critical 8 km per hour mark. 2. Covering or shading the aggregate stockpiles. Shading aggregate stockpiles is crucial to prevent a rise in aggregate temperature, which can impact concrete temperature. Utilizing existing shades or covering with tarpaulin helps maintain optimal aggregate conditions. 3. Brooming or texturing of concrete surface. 
Brooming or texturing the slab concrete surface during the initial set can effectively reduce crack depth and width, contributing to crack prevention. 4. Retempering with power trowel finish. Giving a power trowel finish within 2-4 to four hours after concrete finishing helps seal any opened cracks, minimizing the chances of further cracks developing. 5. Controlling the fines and fine aggregate. Controlling fines and fine aggregate, especially those passing through 150 microns, is essential to reduce water demand and cracking. Particularly when using crushed rock sand without air or water classifiers. 6. Covering of concrete with plastic sheet or hessian cloth. Covering freshly laid concrete with a plastic sheet or hessian cloth prevents rapid moisture loss from the concrete surface, reducing the likelihood of plastic shrinkage cracks. 7. Control on water-cement ratio and use of cohesive mix. Maintaining control over the water-cement ratio and using a cohesive mix, avoiding lean concrete with a high water-cement ratio, helps prevent weak layers that are susceptible to early-age tensile stresses and drying shrinkage. 8. Proper concrete mixing and maintaining concrete mixing time. Ensuring proper concrete mixing for a minimum of 2 to 3 minutes is crucial to prevent segregation and ensure homogeneity. 9. Use of adequate workability mix. Utilizing an adequate workable concrete mix greatly reduces the shrinkage effect, with lean concrete being more prone to shrinkage due to capillary surface tension effects. 10. Water sprinkling over aggregate to maintain aggregate temperature. Water sprinkling over aggregates helps maintain aggregate temperature, a cost-effective method to lower overall concrete temperature, with precautions for proper moisture correction. 11. Late-night concreting to control temperature of concrete. Late-night concreting, when aggregate, water, and atmospheric temperatures are within control limits, is an effective practice to mitigate shrinkage cracks. 12. Use of ice to control temperature of concrete. The use of ice to lower the temperature of the water used in concrete contributes to reducing overall concrete temperature. 13. Use of shrinkage reducing admixture. Shrinkage reducing admixtures from reputable suppliers can effectively minimize the impact of shrinkage cracking, addressing both drying and self-desiccation. SRAs reduce surface tension, increasing the energy fraction used in creating an interfacial area, thus preventing cracks. Implementing these strategies and techniques provides a holistic approach to minimize plastic shrinkage cracks in concrete, ensuring the longevity and durability of your structures. And there you have it, a comprehensive overview of plastic shrinkage and cracks in concrete. By understanding these factors and implementing proper measures during concrete placement, we can minimize the risk of plastic shrinkage cracking and ensure the durability of our structures. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more insightful content.